tonight, tonight, I want to minister. I want to give a word directly to those of you who have gotten distracted, who have gotten distracted. I know that this word was timely because I know what the enemy has been trying to do to me. Don't allow what's going on in the world, in the nation, in your house, on your job, in your body, with your money to cause you to take your focus off of your assignment. When you are distracted, that means that you are unable to concentrate. You're unable to concentrate. Why? Because your mind is being preoccupied. And I'm talking to those of you that had a drive. You, you know, you had passion. You had a burden to get things done. I mean, you're a visionary. God gives you ideas. You know, your creative juices, they flow. You, you're very, you're very uh, forward thinking. You, you're one that never settles. You, you do things in a big way. But somewhere up in here, you've allowed things that's happening on the sideline to cause you to become distracted distracted and you've taken your focus off of your assignment. How do you know that you're distracted? Here are some signs that you're distracted. When you're distracted, you become very distant. When you're distracted, you become very disengaged. I love you, Pastor Kemp. You become very disengaged. When you're distracted, you become very absent. You become absorbed with everything else other than your assignment. When you're distracted, that means your attention has been diverted. I, I, you know, I, I used to be able to write, but something is going on. I used to be able to flow, but there's something blocking me. I used to, you know, be on it, but now I'm flying off the handle. My emotions are getting the best of me. I'm, I'm, I'm spending too much time listening to what others are saying. I'm spending too much time feeding my spirit with negative stuff. The, 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 the passion I used to have for fulfilling vision, the passion I used to have for the things of God, the fervor I used to have for fulfilling my mandate. I don't have it anymore. Now I've become inattentive. Now I've become very vague. Now I am so far away. Some of you feel far away from God right now because you're not able to do what you used to do. Some of you, you feel like because you haven't been able to worship in a sanctuary that you don't have the connection with God. Maybe God allowed this to happen so that we won't be so religious, but now we'll really come into true relationship with him. And let me say this, for those that are not willing and not pliable and not flexible in this season with all that's going on, for those that cannot shift, you will not survive. There are going to be many ministries that will not be able to survive after this pandemic because they were so stuck on doing things one way. They've allowed the pandemic to distract them from their assignment. Whether I'm in a church, whether I'm behind a pulpit, it does not stop me from doing what God called me to do. I'm ministering to somebody tonight. Some of us have gotten off track. We've gotten way off course and we've allowed again the things on the sideline. We've allowed some misses. We've allowed situations going on, the chaos, the confusion, all the stuff going on in politics. We've allowed ourselves to focus on that and we're missing what God is using us to do in the midst of this chaos. We've been in a pandemic for nine months. My question to you tonight is, what have you birthed? I'm getting seed already. God bless you, Janae. I received the seed. I received the seed. You will not struggle in this pan at pandemic. We're going to prosper. We're going to prosper even more now than we did before the pandemic hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm declaring that over you all. Our credit is lining up in the pandemic. Promotion is being released in the pandemic. In the pandemic. 
God is using what looks bad to work for our good. What have you birthed? We've been in, we've been in a pandemic for nine months. What have you birthed? Or have you gotten distracted? Have you used this time wisely? Have you come out with your business? Have you built on what God allowed you to establish? Have you used this time to write? Have you used this time to pull out gifts that you never even knew were there? Have you used, have you used this time wisely? Or have you become vague? Have you become disconnected? Have you become a bitch warmer? Have you become a bench warmer? My son was in basketball tournaments all weekend in Pennsylvania. My baby son. And we traveled two hours to go to this and they got their uniforms. They're looking good. He's in seventh grade. He's on the seventh grade team. And they're playing all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I went to the game. Bless you, Jadia, for the seed. Thank you. God bless you for the seed. I, I went to the game on Saturday, and there, it's time for them to play. And the, the opposing team are some big guys. My son is the smallest guy on the team. They're big guys. And, you know, they're so big, I'm trying to figure out if these guys are really in seventh grade or did y'all get some hot schoolers to come here and, and, act, and, and be imposters? Like, where these big dudes come from? What are they eating? What are they drinking? Big guys. And so the game starts. And as the game is starting, my son's team, they are killing. I mean, they out there, every basket, every shot they tried to make, it, 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 it hit. Every, every, every ball they threw, it went right through the net. And they started leading by 15. They had a 15-point lead. By second quarter, they had a 20-point lead. They're doing good. My son out there doing his thing. And now we're coming into the second quarter. Second quarter, my son gets the ball. He's at the three-point line, and he throws the ball, and he misses the shot. When he misses the shot, I watch his whole spirit. I watched his whole countenance become discouraged. When he missed the shot, God bless you, Ira, for the seed. When he missed the shot, I watched his whole body language change. In the beginning, he was real confident. Shoulders up. He had this little swag walk to him. He bouncing the ball real smooth. When he missed the shot, I saw him literally shrinking. I saw him becoming small on the court. And I'm yelling out on the court, keep your head in the game. Just because you miss don't mean the game is over. Do you all hear me? Keep your head in the game. There are some of you, devil, you ain't going to take my voice tonight. I'm getting this word out. There are some of you because you've experienced some misses. You've become deflated. And you become discouraged. If you all ain't shared this word, share it right now. Because somebody's discouraged. Somebody has some misses and they feel like the game is over. Come on. And oh, Rabbi, share this word. Somebody needs this right now. Somebody needs this right now. You've had some misses. You've lost some stuff. You've lost some income. You've lost some, some, maybe some credibility. Maybe you've lost a position. Maybe your job has even folded because of what's going on in the economy. Maybe you've lost somebody by way of a relationship. Vaughn, I received the seed. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost a friend. Maybe you've lost your voice because of a miss. Because of a mistake. Maybe, maybe you've missed by whatever means you've had a miss. And that miss has caused you to get distracted. And now you're focusing on your miss. You're focusing on what's going on on the sideline. You're focusing on all the negativity and you've gotten your eyes off of the game. You've gotten your eyes off of the assignment. You've allowed the enemy to shut your mouth. You've allowed the enemy to make you feel that the game is over. You've allowed the enemy to make you feel that you've blown it. 
He missed the shot. He became discouraged. Body language looked defeated. And guess what? The whole team took on that same posture. The whole team took on that same demeanor. And they started responding like they had lost already. Mind you, they were in the lead. But once their countenance changed. Once they lost their confidence, once they lost their swag, they lost their, 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 their mojo. Once they lost that, guess what? The other team started taking occasion and started making their shot. And by the end, they won the game. Why? Because my son's team got distracted because of one miss. They got distracted because of the noise the opponent was making, because of the taunting, because the guys were big, because it looked like they were gonna be overtaken. They missed the game. They lost the game. God is sending a word to you tonight, to me tonight. And he says, whatever you do, you better keep your head in the game. This is not the time for you to sit in the stands. This ain't the time for you to get comfortable on the bench. Now is high time for us to take our rightful place and to be about our business. Now it's time for us to make an impact, not just in church, but it's time for us to take territory. Now is the time to go and buy up properties. Now is the time to stack up those coins. Now is the time to encourage and put your stuff out because the world is in trouble. And guess what? We're the answer. Get your Bibles. We are at church, right? Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Y'all should be sowing right now. You don't know when to sow. When the word is coming and when that word is right, that's when you sow. I never allow a word to hit my life and hit me right where I am. And I not sow right then where the word is being released. Don't you all miss what God is doing right now, tonight. Luke, the fourth chapter. Get your Bibles. Luke, the fourth chapter. I see you, Sharita. Thank you. If you have not shared this live, it's not too late. Share it. Share it. Tell them, tune in now. This is a word that's going to bless you. Keep your head in the game. Keep your head in the game. Oh, yeah, some of y'all going to say, come on, coach, put me back in. I've been on the sideline. I done, I done tried to catch my breath, and I didn't end up falling asleep on the sideline. Put me back in the game, coach. I've gotten distracted. Put me back in the game, coach. I've gotten comfortable. Put me back in the game, coach. I was discouraged. Hondo, Rabashe. You will not sit on the sideline any longer. Luke 4. We're going to do some reading. They're asking, what's my cash app on Instagram? Somebody let them know. The Lord told me, you release the word, I'm going to be a blessing to you. And in this season, I'm receiving blessings. I'm not going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. God told me, this is what I'm allowing you to do to be a blessing to you. So, 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 Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter. Are y'all with me? We're going to do some reading. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2, y'all with me? Verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did not eat anything. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Are y'all with me? That's verse 2. Thank you, Monique. That's verse 2. Verse 3, and the devil said unto him, the devil is talking to Jesus and the devil says, if you be the son of God, then go ahead and command this stone to be made bread. And Jesus answered the devil back and he said to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the enemy has come to do what? Distract him when he was what? When he was most vulnerable. 
Many of you, the enemy has been trying to take occasion because he knows you're discouraged. He knows you're in between funds. He knows you're a little nervous. He knows that you don't know how the thing's going to happen next. And now the enemy is coming to speak in your ear to make you feel that what God told you is not going to happen. You have to immediately tell the enemy where his words need to go. The Bible says to put them and command them to be captive and to come into obedience to the world word and to the will of God. He told him immediately, listen, you ain't going to distract me. I don't live by just natural food. But my drive, my focus, I'm filled up by the word that comes out of the mouth of my father. Do you all see that response? That's how you respond to distraction. You put the word on the distraction and you let the, the enemy know I am not coming off of my assignment. Yes, he's fasted for 40 days. Yes, he's hungry. Yes, he's tired. The enemy comes now. Hey, get some bread. He says, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I am sustained from the word that comes from my father's mouth. Guess what he was saying? My will is to do the will of my father. My meat is to do the will of my father. You will not distract me. You will not get me off of what I've been sent here to do. And that's the same way you've got to respond to the enemy. You don't let the enemy take you off of your game. Verse five, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give to you and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me that whoso, whoever I give it to. Now the enemy's lying. You can't give Jesus something that you don't even own. How are you giving Jesus back what's already his? The enemy is a liar, y'all, and you can't listen to him. He can't tell the truth even if he wanted to. He's lying to the creator of the mountain. All of this I'm going to give to you. He's telling this to the, to the creator of the kingdom. I'm going to give it to you if you worship me. Verse 8 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. Let me make it very clear to you who I am. It's never been the plan of God for me to worship you. Some people are mad at, at some of y'all who ain't distracted because you're very confident in your assignment. You, you, you know exactly who you are and you know exactly who you belong to. So you ain't moved by the enemy's words. Jesus said, let me remind you that you ain't, that shall have no other God before me. And that you shall worship the Lord God, and that's it. So you go on to verse, all the way through 13, and now I want you all to drop down to verse 16. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? My voice trying to leave me, but I'm going to get this word out before I get done. I'm going to get this prayer out before this voice leaves tonight. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, Jesus, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the sanctuary on the Sabbath day. I see you, Sierra. I love you, baby. And he stood up to read. And there, when he stood up, there was delivered unto him the books from the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he stood up and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
Let me let everybody know what my assignment is. Just in case the enemy thought he was going to stop me. Just in case the enemy thought I'm confused about what I'm called to do. Just in case the enemy thought I was too weak, too tired, too hungry, or too distracted to fulfill my assignment. Let me let you all know that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. God, I wish I could say it like I feel it. To the captives, to preach the recovery of sight, to the blind, to set I know, hallelujah, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and he passed it to the minister. I'm clear about my assignment. Let me set the record straight that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and it is my job. It is my mandate. It is my mission to change lives. I'm called to set those who are bound free. I'm called to declare the word of God. I am called to the broken, to the bruised. And guess what? You are too. You are too. I hope you all feel what I'm feeling right now. That's why you can't be distracted. That's why you can't become apathetic. That's why you can't lose your fire and your zeal. That's why you can't lose your burden for God. Because the spirit of the Lord is upon you. And you have been anointed. Glory to God to preach to mend broken hearts, to heal those who are wounded, to restore those who are broken. That is your assignment. You better keep your head in the game. The world needs you. Your family needs you. Those that work with you on your job, they need what comes out of your mouth. Do you all hear me? Your children, and oh, Rabbi, children need you. Your spouse needs what you have. Where you live, they need you. I almost got discouraged. I didn't I didn't settle in here in New Jersey. I'm a new kid here. And everybody ain't too excited about the new kid being on the block. And this new kid coming in here like we can take over. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's let's run. Let's let's fly. I'm, I'm, I'm here on assignment. And I almost got discouraged. I'm just going to sit back and say, you know what? I'll just let things be how it is. I love you, Michael. I just lay back. You know, they got it. Oh, no. And the Lord said, oh, no, no. Uh, -uh. that's why I sent you there. I sent you to that region to do what you're doing. I sent you to that family to do what you're doing. I put you with that man to be who you are to him. You better not get distracted. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You better not get off your game. You better stay in the game. Keep your head in the game. You don't allow what's going on on the side to cause you to forget what you're called to do and who you're called to be. The devil is a liar. You've been on the sideline long enough. Y'all done got comfortable. This pandemic done got you comfortable. You done got used to being home and not, not doing and not moving and not, you, you, you just, you slacked up. You done slacked up. This ain't time to slack up. This ain't time to slack up. This ain't time to slack up. Do you all hear me? Pick it back up again and go. That's for somebody tonight. I don't know what it is. Whatever that that is, pick it back up and go. You've left it half done. You've started it and you've put it down. Pick it back up. Whatever God showed you, pick it back up. Whatever God told you to do, pick it back up and do it. Whatever God told you to say, 
pick it back up and do it. I had a publishing company I started, marketing company I started. I didn't have enough help to get it done, and I put it down. Guess what? In the pandemic, I picked it back up, and God is sending me the help I need. Yeah, everything I'm supposed to do in this season, I'm going to do it. And guess what? You are too. You are too. Sitting on the bench, just drinking water. I told the church last yesterday, my baby CL, my oldest, that baby wanted to play basketball so bad. And he uh, uh, auditioned for the basketball team year after year after year. He finally made an AAU team. And my poor little child would never get in the game. He would sit on that sideline, and I would watch the back of his jersey for about two, three hours. And I would be yelling, go, CL. I'm proud of you, son. And he got a nerve every five minutes to get up and ask for water. What do you get water for? You ain't you ain't even in the game. I mean, y'all, he was drinking water. And then when his brother played football, he was the, one of the little boys that gave them water. He the water boy. He drinking water like he on the field. What are you drinking water for? You ain't playing. Why y'all drinking water? What y'all tired from? What you tired from? If you ain't birth nothing, you shouldn't be tired. Man, she talking strong. Yep. If you haven't birthed nothing these nine months, why are you drinking water? What, why are you out of breath? You ain't done nothing. If ain't nobody's life been impacted by your life, why are you out of breath? If you have not shared your story with the world yet, why are you out of breath? If you haven't started networking with new people and started making new connections why are you out of breath i i, I gotta talk to y'all that way because you got distracted why are you drinking water i told him i don't want to see you get another bottle of water until you get in that game you gonna drink more water than michael jordan put the water down and get in that game Get back in the game and keep your head in there. Do you all hear me, warriors? This ain't time for wimps. If I got to be your drill sergeant tonight, my little five foot self, if I got to be your general tonight, then that's what God has called me to be. I'm clear on my assignment. I'm not going to get off my post. You better not get off yours. Keep your head in the game. And for those of you that's gotten out the game, you better tell the Lord tonight, hey, coach, put me back in. Put me back in. I've sat on the side long enough. Put me back in the game. There are some things that I'm supposed to do and it ain't going to get done until I get back in the game. You was waiting for somebody else to do your part. It's for you to do. It ain't nobody else's assignment. It's yours. Get back in the game. I'm going to pray. I believe that the Lord ministered to somebody tonight. I feel the power of God. I feel like God has reignited a passion in so many of you tonight. I feel it because I feel something that came out of me. I feel that God has reignited you, have lit your fire tonight. You needed to hear that. I always love for my sons to have hard coaches. Don't pacify them. Don't baby them. Talk to them and say, get in there and play like you know how to play. That's what I'm doing, y'all, how I'm talking to y'all tonight. Get your head back in the game. Stop giving sideline noise attention. Stop giving things that hold no kingdom value your energy. Stop giving people that don't understand your assignment your time. 
Keep your head in the game. The enemy sends distractions to keep you off and he'll use the ones closest to you. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. I'm getting ready to pray. And while I'm praying, I want you all to sow if you have not. I believe that those of you that have received the word, you're going to respond. My assignment is to pray tonight. My assignment is to release this prayer over you. And I pray that after tonight, you will run. You will run and never go back. I pray that after tonight, that you will get back on that court and you will play like God taught you how to play. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Lord, for Cyber Church. I thank you, God, because you ordained this. You created this outlet. You created this avenue to get your word to your children. And tonight, God, we receive the word of the Lord. Tonight, we receive the love in, in a rebuke way, God. We still receive it in a loving way because you chasten those that you love. And we thank you, God, for the chastening by way of your word. We thank you, oh God, for the example that you've shown us in your son Jesus. He never got off of his assignment, even if it meant him pain, even if it cost him his life, even if it came with humiliation. He never got off of his assignment. He kept his head in the game. He kept his heart at one with yours. He stayed true to his assignment. And just as your son did that, God it is our desire that we will have that same resilience. God, I pray that you will give these, your children, the stamina to keep going, the resilience to keep going. God, give them the strength to be able to endure, to endure as good soldiers. Glory to God, to take lickings, but to be able to keep on going, to be able to keep on ticking to be able to keep on producing, to be able to keep on birthing. I thank you, oh God, for these, your players that you have called to be on the front line. Give them the wisdom. Give them the physical strength. Give them the spiritual sense. Give them the foresight. Give them the insight. Grant them revelation that they need to fulfill their assignment here on the earth. I rebuke every slothful spirit. I come against every spirit of fear and resistance. I pray, God, that fire will be released under their feet now. I pray, God, that what has lied dormant, glory to God, is being activated. Ha! Huh? Even now, I thank you for unlocking every locked place in their lives and causing, God, the creative juices to flow now. Thank you, God, that the their ears hear your voice again. They see you clearly again. Thank you, oh God, for reigniting their passion for prayer. Glory to God to seek you for instruction. Glory to God. Thank you, oh God, for removing every spirit that is apathetic, that is comfortable, that has been at ease, that is laid back, that is stuck. Hallelujah. Thank you for moving them from that place to do Doing, to going, to being, to acting out, to releasing, to to birthing it out. Thank you, God, for producers, for those that begin results. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing that you're releasing upon these tonight to get results, to get it done. Thank you for the strength to finish. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that even as they're moving, as they're running, 
as they're in this game, glory to God, that you have enlisted them to be a part of. When they get tired, God, you be their strength. When they get winded, God, you release the air, the wind that they need. Glory to God. When their knees get tired, God, cause them to stand like a deer upon a mountain. When they feel it, they can't make it, God. Give them the strength to stand in spite of. When they feel like they're going to be overtaken, remind them, God, that you are with them, that your strength is being made perfect in their weakness. I thank you for these warriors. I thank you for these victors. I thank you for these entrepreneurs. I thank you for these birthers. I thank you for these world changers. I thank you for these that shall break. Hallelujah. Walls. I thank you, God, for builders. I thank you, oh God, for visionaries. I thank you, God, for these authors. I thank you, God, for these that you have called for such a time as this. I thank you, God, for realigning their hearts, realigning their spirits, realigning their focus to your will. I thank you, oh God, for refocusing them to your assignment for their lives. That's where their prosperity is. That's where their success is. That's where their money is. God, I thank you that tonight they're getting back in the game. And they will no longer allow themselves to be distracted, to be diverted. They will no longer allow their minds to be preoccupied with things of the carnal and not with your kingdom, missions, and mandates. Thank you, O oh God, for these kingdom people that shall walk out your will in their lives on the earth. I thank you for them. I bless you for them. And even as they're sowing and those that have already sowed, if you have not, I want to pray now over you. God, I thank you for every seed that has been released into my life. God, I thank you for the grace that you've given to me in this season. And I pray that same grace over these that have come into partnership with this word by sowing seed. I thank you, oh God, for their response. They're responding. But God, I thank you that they're responding by sowing treasure. I thank you, oh God, for blessing them, for blessing your daughter. I pray, God, that there shall be no lack in their house, no want no struggle, but we declare abundance more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love you. I thank you. I bless you. Go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you for the seed, Vicky. I see seed coming in. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go. Go in the power of God. Go in the strength of God. Get in that game and stay focused. You all have a blessed night, and I'll see you all next week.